chases down the demons of his past but the closer he gets, the more his mind seems to rebel. He's finally diving into the main mystery, but it's hard to search for the truth when you're not sure you'll like the answer. To make matters worse, memories continue to bombard Teju with a vengeance and the effects are not going unnoticed. Episode 8 Recap The body of Go Young Suk, the woman dad was hiding in the bathroom with, has been found in a hotel. The scene reeks of the manicure murderer's MO and everything points to dad as the killer. Shaken, Teju stumbles out of the room. Happy memories of dad flash through his mind to the soundtrack of his pounding heart and train whistles. Everything comes to a grinding halt with the image of dad's bloodied face. It can't be. Teju whispers. The team heads to dad's house first thing the next morning. Today, the Captain Dong Chul's aggressive approach sets Teju more on edge than usual. Dad isn't home, and mom explains that he went to meet someone the night before. Little Teju adds that they're going on a trip together and Dong Chul notes the stacks of clothes ready to be packed. Dong Chul notes that it doesn't look like they're preparing for a short trip. Mom nervously admits it's their first family vacation so Dad suggested they stay a while. On barges and then, complaining that Dad has been messing with her cosmetics, that she sells, again. Mom sends little Teju with Aunt and then the police literally tear the house apart in their search. In addition to personal items, eating utensils, toothbrush, and a cigarette butt, bagged by the officers Dong Chul also snags a cookie tin. By the time Dong Chul calls it a day, the house looks like a tornado blew through. Outside, Detective Nam Shik reports that the neighbors had nothing but positive things to say about Dad. The only odd thing he'd learned was apparently that Dad used the corner store payphone every evening at 10 p.m. Nam Shik leaves to fetch the call records and Yonki sets out to locate victim Go Young Suk's acquaintances. Teju lingers behind to help Mom straighten up a little. Mom asks if Dad's done something really bad this time, but Teju can only promise to tell her as soon as he discovers anything. Rejoining Dong Chul in the car, Teju is appalled to see him rifling through the cookie tin he'd swiped. From the contents, it's clearly a collection of KJMO's treasures, but among them are lighters that could only have come from Dad. Dong Chul argues that those are evidence. The duo drops in on Manager Park to get the skinny on Go Young Suk's corpse. Manager Park confirms that she suffocated on the panties cramped down her throat and reveals that he found a tuft of chloroformed cotton in her nostrils. Na Young comes in to report that the test results on the fingerprints and blood found at the motel belong to Dad. Dong Chul holds the folder out to Teju, but the younger detective is in the middle of another episode. Teju imagines his father in the motel room, smiling sadistically as he paints Go Young Suk snails. With horror, he watches as Dad murders the woman in his imagination and then bolts from the room. In the bathroom, Teju empties his stomach into a toilet and stumbles over to the sink to wash his face. When he looks back at the mirror, a bright light flashes and the mirror switches between his reflection and his doctor and nurse. The medical team attempts to stimulate Tejomo's brain, but is disappointed with the results. Teju screams that he can see them but the doctor sighs that his reaction is too weak. I leave something is getting in the way of Mr. Han Tejomo's consciousness. Doc tells the nurse, otherwise, it could be that he's deliberately avoiding the situation. Teju presses for answers but Doc only says that if he wants out, he'll have to show them something. Teju screams that he'll find a way to prove that he saw them and smashes his fist into the mirror. Na Young finds him like this and takes him to get his hand bandaged. After the nurse leaves, Teju quietly wonders how long he has to stay here, in 1988. Na Young figures he still must not like it there, but Teju quickly assures her that's not what he meant. Teju admits that his childhood is fuzzy, but recently unpleasant memories have been resurfacing. Na Young points out humans only have access to 5% of their memory, while the rest is stored in the subconscious. She says it's a defense mechanism and suggests that he not try too hard to remember. Some memories may be better left forgotten, she tells Teju. Dong Chol bursts into the room and eyes the pair suspiciously. Na Young hides a smile and excuses herself. Dong Chol notices Tejoo's bandaged hand and asks if Teju is trying to copy him. He. Back at the station, Yonki is enjoying himself as he interviews, cough, flirts, cough with the dead girl's co-workers. His fun is cut short by the arrival of Dong Chul and Teju. 
the women tell Taeju they didn't really know Go Young Suk since she'd been working less than a week. Despite not recognizing his name, the women immediately react to Dad's photo. They call him Mr. Pacific after the cosmetic brand he always gifts them with after stealing it from Taejo's aunt. One woman worries she might be a target since Dad had also given her a bottle of red nail polish. The women reveal that Dad had another girlfriend. Alas, all they know is that she's part of the lottery gang. One of the women thinks Dad is probably already dead. Apparently the dead woman Dad was seeing had also been involved with dirty CEO O young man. It's a name Dong Chul recognizes and he looks unnerved. Later, Nam Shik explains to Taeju that CEO O owns a lot of property the police can't touch. Yonki wonders if they really should go digging for Dad's body and Taeju asks if Dong Chul really thinks Dad is their killer. The other detectives seem convinced, but Taeju argues there's no motive. Na Young brings Dad's payphone call records. Most calls are to the motel where the dead girl, Go Young Suk, had been staying. However, there were a handful to a coffee shop and a stationery store, and one call abroad. The coffee shop matches one of Dad's lighters from Little Tejoo's treasure tin, so the detectives head over to investigate. The manager denies knowing Dad, so Taeju asks for a list of the girls working there. Dong Chul notes the shop closes at 10 p.m., the same time Dad called. The detectives overhear an argument between the manager and young woman who works there. The men get up to block the girl's exit but she's feisty and sends the rest of the patrons running by brandishing a knife at the detectives. Hilariously, her crazy is no match for Dong Chul. He breaks through his team and hoses her down with a fire extinguisher, muttering his usual gripe about disrespecting cops. He. They manage to sit her down for questioning, but she remains uncooperative. Her disrespectful attitude grates Dong Chul's nerves and when she claims not to know Dad, he blows up. Dong Chul can tell she lives at the cafe and therefore has been the receiver of Dad's phone calls after the shop closes. Yonki's comment that she's dating Dad finally elicits an answer and she snaps that not only is Dad old, but he already has a girlfriend, Madam Jo. She doesn't know anything else about the mystery woman, and has only seen her once, herself. When asked why Dad calls, she reveals that he asks about business since he's the boss of the lottery gang. The detectives are shocked and the young woman continues that Dad even runs a casino with Madam Jo. They drag her back to the station where they figure out there are nine members in the lottery gang, with Dad and Madam Jo at the top. Na Young adds that the gang has a made 750 million won, or roughly $750,000. The men try to calculate the bank interest but the cafe girl snorts. She points out that criminals would make more using their cash to give out personal loans, aka loan sharking. When asked how Dad handled his money, she says he carried around what he needed in a bag and hid the rest in a storage room only he and Madam Joe know about. The detectives realize that Dad didn't have a bag when they'd first arrested him and returned to the Hawaii room salon to check the bathroom. Alas, the ceiling hatch they'd remembered being a jar is now empty. Dong Chul figures Go Young Suk likely retrieved the money while they'd interrogated Dad. He thinks they fought.